Welcome back sewists. I want to work on a pretty basic and very easy pattern today because I just need some comfy tops to wear. Um, if you saw my haul a couple weeks ago, this is McCall's um, 7286. Very cute basic raglan top. It has uh, quite a few fun uh, versions on it. There's a little lace overlay. It can, you can do the one with the little insets at the side. So if you're looking for sort of a basic raglan, you could easily do this one that has sort of a shirt tail hem. You could do short sleeve, long sleeve, overlay or no overlay. Or you could do the one that I'm going to do, which is view D. And it has little insets at the side. This is meant for stretch knit. We will be doing this on the serger. I have a feeling cut out to sew. This may be an hour, hour and a half project. Um, this is ranked as easy by the pattern company. I'm also going to be sewing up some of my stash. So let me show you the fabric. There's still Sherpa residue <laughs> on my cutting table. All right, so I have both of these. It takes a yard for the one that I'm doing. You need about a yard of each fabric, a yard, a yard, and an eighth, depending on your size. So I have this really pretty, um, it's a polyester. It's a pretty heavy weight. It's got some nice hands. So just plain black with rose, but I think I'm going to do the body out of this. I have been vacillating back and forth. I stood in the mirror and looked to see how I wanted them. I think I'm gonna do the body out of the rose, and then I'm going to do the sleeve and the inset out of just a plain black. This is a tiny bit lighter weight. Um, again, polyester knit, stretchy. The re And I actually bought this to make linings out of, but it's perfectly fine for what we're going to do too. Then I have lots of it, so I can still get a slip out of it if I want to. And I'm using up some of my stash. I love a raglan top. I've said it a thousand times. It's one of my favorite t-shirts to wear. And I have a feeling I might make the one that's the shirt tail hem. I might make another one out of it. I have quite a few pieces of one yard of knit that I bought for things like this, where I'm just like, I'll, I might want to do a sleeve alteration or a sleeve option that's different, you know, body one color, sleeve the other. So I have quite a few one yard hanks of knit that I could sew so many cute tops out of and make different sleeve lengths. So this one's going to be fast and easy. I did make a very slight pattern alteration. Let me show you what I did. If you are new to sewing, um, patterns that have a knit will have this little thing on the back and it is for you to make sure that your fabric stretches enough for the way the pattern was made. This is how it works and I've shown this before but if you're new sewing with me you take the knit and you can do this in the store with your pattern and unstretched you want to line it up in this gray area so I'm going to hold it down here and then you want to take the end and make sure it will stretch easily to the other side. So that's how much stretch you need for it to work for this pattern. So we have no problem. Most of my knits work for that. I'm gonna do rows here with plain black here. And you're looking at your pattern, depending on the view um, listed. So top A takes one through five, top C or D takes six through 10, and then there's options, right? So I'm doing top D. So I cut out pattern pieces, six, which is the inset, seven, which is the front, back, which is the eight, nine, which is the sleeve, and 10 is the neckband. There's two different neckbands because the necklines are different. The one that has the shirt tail hem has a little bit lower neckline in the front. So I've got all of those cut out. I always need to shorten the sleeve just a wee bit. So when I was ironing my pattern pieces before I cut them apart, I folded up and out a half an inch, which makes a whole inch when it's, because you can see the half two times, that makes my sleeve a whole inch shorter and I taped it down. And then I drew my um, true up lines where I trued it up from here to here. So I gained a little on the bottom, lost a little on the top and cut it. So my pattern is forever prepared for me to have it an inch shorter in the sleeve. So that's it for the sleeve. I'm doing an extra large um, and I'm fuller in the hip. But what I did is I cut to the extra large here and then I, on the side seam, went from extra large to double XL on the side. 
and then follow the double XL on down. The pattern inset piece is the same no matter which side you're cutting. So I didn't have to change anything here to make this alteration. So for the front and the back, all I did was go out from one size to the other to make it a little bit fuller in the hip. So the pattern tells us right here, it gives on the pattern piece itself, this is on the front pattern piece, and most of the patterns will do this. This is the finished garment measurement. So this is how big the garment is finished on top of your body measurement. So if you have a 47 inch bust, this is gonna be pretty tight if you do an XL because it finishes at 47. There's no extra wearing ease. So this has the same bust and hip measurement on this line, which is really waistline, but that's, that's what they say for hip. Cause if you look, this actually swings out a little bit and that's why I chose to increase it just to give myself a little extra room. I want it to lay nice and soft. I don't want it to be clingy at all. And knits can be clingy. So that's it for pattern alterations. I did this alteration to the front and the back and now we're ready to lay out. Okay. I'm laying out just over a yard of fabric. You can see how much extra I have. The nice thing is if I wanted to do the inset matching, I could, there's plenty of it. I can get my neckband piece out of this. The thing I'm most concerned about when laying this out is that I don't have a directional fabric. My fabric is not directional, so I can flip my pattern pieces, but I'm paying attention to where these big rose clusters are. I don't want them like, I don't want like a big rose cluster here or like here. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking about where the rose clusters fall. So like in the up around the neckline would be nice. I'm just thinking about that. I also don't want, because they're kind of far apart, you end up with like a big black space with like a run one rose here. So I'm thinking through where this lays out because both pieces have to be laid on the fold. So you can see I have my folds here. So I folded to the middle. Here's my sel selvage edge. So selvage to selvage is in the middle. Here's a fold and that way I have two fold lines so I can lay this out. So this is my back and I have a big rose cluster here and here's my front. I think I'm gonna flip them actually. I think I would rather have this big rose cluster um, sort of in the neckline in the front. I think that's gonna look nicest. And then I'll put this one on the back and I can flip it either way. Kind of doing the same thing where I have yeah, I think that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, because I'm not going to try and line up my my design at all. I'm not worried about that so much. I'm just making sure nothing weird on the other side. Yeah, I think I'm going to like that. Okay, so that's it for this. I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these out. Cutting on the fold means we do not cut this folded edge. We want to leave it alone so it opens up and makes a big wide piece. If you're new to sewing, if this is new to you, that's um, that's important. Don't cut that fold line if it says cut on fold. Okay, so this is all pinned together and ready to go. I did go ahead and just put the neckline down here on the fold. You could either cut it open one or cut it on the fold and it works the same way. So here's my little neck piece and we're ready to go. If you're new, if you're a beginner sewist, um, when cutting, it's very important to cut accurately. The more accurately you cut, the more accurately you will be able to sew. So I'm cutting with my scissors straight up and down. I'm not twisting them to either side. There are notches, which we will mark, but not at the moment. So I'm just going to cut this out. And I didn't say, so if you are new sewist, if you're not, roll forward a couple seconds here, but if you're a new sewist, I prep my patterns before cutting out. You will see people who will lay the pattern out with all of its extras laying on there and cut into it. I never do that because you get a less accurate cut and because you are more likely to have an accident. It's harder to see exactly what you're doing if you leave all of the extra pattern paper on there. So I either trace off, if it's a pattern that's multi-sized and I know I need to use all the sizes, I will trace the size I want and preserve the integrity of the pattern. If it's something like this where I know I'm just going to be cutting it for me over and over and over again, I will cut it out and make it exactly how I want it so I can make it many times. So that's what I've done here. That's why it's already cut exactly how I want and altered before it ever makes it to the fabric. If you have fit issues, it's really important to dry fit your pattern, which is take the paper pattern to the body. Also double compare all of your measurements to the pattern's measurements to make sure the fit's going to be there. If you know that normally when you buy clothes, it's always too long in the waist or too short in the waist, those are things you want to check with your pattern 
before you go cutting it out because some things cannot be changed once it's cut. You're stuck once it's cut. And that's why I do a lot of prep work first. Okay, on to cutting. As you can see, how that's going to look. This is such pretty fabric. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna come where my notches are in the sleeves specifically, and I'm going to do my little markings. Here's my double notch in the back. I cut, instead of cutting out so they hang out, I do it the opposite. I make little tiny snips, not even all the way in, so that I have little tiny cuts. That is um, 5 8 inch seam allowance, so this will not interfere with my seam allowance. You can see how small they are. That's what I do. Back sleeve will have two. Front sleeve will have one. There's also in the neckline a little marking that corresponds to these markings here. So we have one for the center front, which is easy. The center front, center back are easy to mark, but this one is to help with this. So I'm gonna mark it on my little neckline and I'm gonna mark it here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a tiny little one right in the center front on both of these. So I'm gonna just do a tiny little nick and that's just to help line up when we're ready to quarter our neckline. Okay, let's move on to cutting out the black. So here's my sleeve, double layer fabric and one set of the little triangle insets we need to cut four total so i'm cutting two sets so once i cut this one i'm going to flip it over and cut another one in this area and we'll have everything cut out i need to mark my dart this does have a neckline dart which is very traditional in an old-fashioned raglan um, usually you don't see as much in t-shirts but it's kind of fun and it gives you your shoulder shape so you can see where the seam is on this there will be a little dart right there in this garment. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my little sleeve notches. <coughs> Now we're going to come back and mark our all of the circles we're going to come back and mark with pencil um, or with chalk on everything so i'm not going to worry about those for now i don't mark every notch there's notches here there's notches on the side seams i really don't mark those but if it helps you do it do especially if you're a new sewist sometimes all those markings are very beneficial I hear music. It sounds like the ice cream truck, but it's 21 degrees outside, so I don't think it is. We're all cut out. Let me show you how to transfer markings. All right, let's start with all of our little circles. You want to make sure and mark the ones appropriate for your size. So I'm marking extra large at the neckline. I'm going to poke a pin right through the middle of that circle. I'm going to pull these out so it's easy to work with for the extra large. That's this one here. I'm going to follow that line up and find my next circle. Poking pins right through the center of those circles. And then if you follow on up, so here's large, extra large. Double XL is actually the shortest circle or the shortest one because it actually, the neckline would have come up here if we'd cut out that size. So this is what we're marking. So I'm looking at my lines. This is where the dart starts. That is what I want to mark. Now I'm going to actually do the little nippy nip here on the, the large, extra large. Make sure we get the right line. I'm gonna make a tiny little nip. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to fold back. And you really want this to be on the wrong side of your fabric because that's the side you're going to see. So if you folded this right sides together, you're gonna be marking on this side on both of them. I have wrong sides together. So I'm gonna to pull this apart till I see 
that little pin coming through. And then right where that pin comes through, we're going to make a little mark. I'm using yellow so it's easy to see against the black on both sides right at that pin. That's going to help me find where to make my, my dart later. And we're actually going to draw our darts on here. If you're an experienced sewist, that may not matter, but for those of you who are new and this is your first time sewing this, I'm going to help you get this dart easier um, than it might be. So here's where it's starting. I'm going to just put a little yellow line where we made our nip. Hopefully you can see the little tiny yellow markings. And if you need to, you can come in and make them bigger. Now, this is knit. Knit gives. So um, you have to kind of be careful how you, you don't want to stretch your fabric out while doing marking. So this is marking number one for the sleeve. The other place we need to mark is this circle. And we need to do that on all of the pieces. So we need to mark that circle for everything. Put a pin straight through the middle of that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the shirt. There's the same circle. This is where we mark match up our shirt and our little triangular inset. So we're going to... And then we have to do the same thing on both of these. So it's right there. Okay, I'm going to go find my other two little triangles and mark those. And then we will be ready to head over to the sewing machine. Okay, I have my machines all threaded up and ready to go. I am going to be using my serger to put this together. If you do not have an overlock machine and you have a sewing machine that has a zigzag, that will work fine. You don't want to do a big zigzag. You want to do a pretty small one. Uh, it depends on how your machines are set up, but it may even have a zigzag specific to knits. I usually do like one by one and a half, like width one, length one and a half, something like that. Um, one and a half by one and a half if you have uh, millimeters on your machine. It depends on how the machines are set up. So that from the outside, it's going to pretty much look like a straight stitch, but it'll have enough give. You won't get popped stitches when you pull on the knit on and off. When we were over marking, I should have had you mark on pattern P6. There's a little notch here. I don't need it as much for lining up as to know which side of the triangle to attach to the shirt. If you look at how it's put together, if you look at um, number one on your pattern sheet, so if you look at number one and number two, they are taking the front and the back and they're sewing this little piece on. Now you can just sew it at your sewing machine or you can sew it at your serger either way. I'm going to pin mine together real quick and show you what they look like and then we're going to just search it. If you are overlocking or surging, um, this has 5 eighths inch of seam allowance. So if you're going to surge this together, you will be surging off a little bit of a seam allowance to get that needle position over at the 5 eighths. So make sure you know where that is. If you need to mark it, mark the 5 eighths inch line on your fabric. I'll show you that it's just so it'll help you if you're a new sewist to this. So let me go get that set up for you. All right, so I have them all pinned on. I went ahead and pinned front and back. So they're pinned on, ready to go. Show you what it looks like. I'll do a little close up so you can see the stitching line and why I did that. Okay, this is how it looks pinned on um, the little corner. I've got one on each, I've got front and back pinned together. This is how it looks before it's sewn. And then just for an example for you, once you mark, match up your little circles, I did yellow. So I poked through, matched up the circle, lined up my edge. I came back and I marked my 5 8 inch line. This, if you're a new sewist or if you're struggling, or especially if you're at the serger and you're not sure where to line up, like mine has markings so I know where to line up, but if you have an overlock that does not, or even if you just struggle at the sewing machine, finding your 5 8 inch and keeping everything straight, you can draw them on. Just do it very lightly. I use Taylor's chalk because it marks so quick and easy and it dusts away nice and easy. And so mark your mark your seam line and then you will line up your needle with this line and stitch it. You'll have nice straight stitches. Now I'm just going to head right over to my serger and I'm going to serge that right off. Um, so I will have a seam finish. It'll stretch and I will lose any extra seam allowance. If you want to keep your seam allowance for fitting purposes, make sure you sew this at the sewing machine instead of the serger because you won't have any seam allowance, um, any excess seam allowance once you've overlocked. So there it is, sewn on, and now I have a little plain black inset. Right. 
this one is the back. So here's the back. I love this. I love a rose pattern. So pretty. And we'll do this one. And then we'll be ready to move on to side seams. Like I thought, it's going to go really fast. So this is step one and step two. We're sewing the insets. This is for view D, step one and step two. On the bottom part of the top, front and back. Now that we have done step one and step two, we're going to take our front and our back, right sides together, which means the pretty side to the pretty side. We're gonna line these up on our side seams and we're gonna sew the side seams. You want your little V's to line up. You don't want that little inset to be offset. It will show. So we're going to be careful about that. Put a few pins in. I never sew over my pins at the serger. I mean, I, I don't want to. I do my best to never sew over them. I'm going to put a pin to make sure we get that lined up at the inset. The one thing about black on black is it's not super noticeable. If I had, you know red inset on purple or something, you would see it a lot more. All right, ready to sew. And we're doing side seam only. This is step three for both sides. Before I sew up the other side, I'm gonna check my little V, make sure it lines up nice so we can see, already see how that's going to look. Definitely gonna give this a slight pressing because you can see pressing makes everything better. So this is a polyester fabric polyester and spandex, I think, but I want to make sure when I give it a press, I'm going to use light steam. I'm not going to heavy hand it and I'm not going to make it too hot because polyester can melt and we don't want that. Now it's pretty sturdy, but we have to be careful about that. Yep. That's cute. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Looks perfect. Okay, let's move on to sleeve. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute and find a sleeve. I'm going to go ahead and mark my dart lines. It's just going to make life easier. If you transferred your markings, you'll have little marks in your uh, neckline of the sleeve. And I'm going to come in now with my pencil or with a piece of chalk. I do not know why they made this thing so hard to get in and out of. Hence the broken chalk. Okay, I'm going to use this and I'm going to use my little ruler. Take my ruler. I'm going to use the lines that are there that I transferred and the notch that I'm going to draw my lines on. So there's one line. I'm going to do this for both dart ends. It's just going to make life easier. I am going to go ahead and sew this at the sewing machine um, for this one thing, just because it's a dart. You could definitely surge this if you are very careful. You can get your point just right. So we're going to do that for both sleeves. We want a nice fine point. If you've never done a dart before, I have a dart video. It's a very old video. Very old is in like three years old. Um, but I will link it below. Um, if you want to understand darts, why darts are done the way they are, etc., and what makes a good dart, it's like a six minute video explaining darts. Darts can be shaped, they can be in practically any part of the garment sleeves, elbows, waistlines, necklines you name it. Anywhere that you have shape that you might need fitting, a dart could show up. Now that I've done that, I'm going to put a pin. I always put a pin in the bottom of my dart where I want to stop. That's going to be my final little point. Sink my needle right in the point. Get rid of my pin. I'm going to take a couple stitches. I am not zigzagging. I am straight stitching this. I did a back stitch. And I'm stitching right up the line that I sewed. I can get my pin out. Back stitch at the other end. And you end up with, now we've sewn that shut, we end up with a real nice looking dart in the neckline. And here's my front sleeve. Here's my back sleeve because I have the two notches. So it shapes that to our body very nicely. Okay, we're going to do the other one. And so sink my needle in the point. Do a two or three back stitches at the most. 
and we have a sleeve. Now that we've done the dart, we are going to go ahead and fold our sleeve. The dart is always on the wrong side, so that makes it easy to tell right from wrong. We're going to fold this in on itself, and we're going to do the underarm seam, 5 eighths of an inch, all the way down. And then we'll go ahead and hem it. You can machine stitch it. You can blind hem it. You can do the um, cover stitch if you have that on your overlock. Lots of different options. I am going to just surge and turn up my hem um, on this one, but sometimes I cover stitch. I do love a cover stitch. Okay. One sleeve. Make sure you put right sides together when you do it. We are close to done. This is such a fast project. All right, now that we have both of our sleeves, that is step, the dart was step four, the underarm is step nine, the hem is step six. If you want to go ahead and hem your sleeve now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just hem it. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna surge around this hem first so that I have a finished edge. And then I will um, just turn it up. I'm gonna machine stitch it. Easy, easy. Careful not to stretch when you're doing these operations. So now I have a seam finish and I can just fold up that hem, put a few pins in it and stitch it down. Okay, there's one. Let's get this one ready. All right, I already have my machine set up, so this should go pretty fast. Now I want to stitch this right side up. So I want to see the side that's going to show when I'm stitching this. I don't want to stitch this from the wrong side. And if you turn up 5 eighths of an inch, you can't, if you stitch on the 5 eighths, you might come off the edge of your fabric. So I'm going to stitch it a half inch, scant 5 eighths. I'm going to set this in. See how I'm pulling it open? I'm going to set this right in at the 5 eighths. Just going to go around this circle when we get to the other side. You can see how the stitching looks. We will cross our stitching and we will have a hem. Now that we have got our sleeves hemmed and made, I'm just going to give them a quick haircut. The thing about um, trimming as you go, one of the many benefits, besides it just looks neater, is that um, when you are crossing seams and you have loose threads, machines tend to accidentally want to pull those threads down inside and jam up. So if you trim off your ex excess threads, it's not going to happen. All right, so now we have two sleeves, and we're going to now pin our sleeves into our shirt. So we are to step seven, the right side around. So I'm gonna turn this around, here's my little sleeve, and we're going to match um, a back sleeve to back bodice, right sides together. That's why I turned it inside out. So I'm gonna slide the sleeve down inside, Match up back notches to back notches and underarm seam to underarm seam. Put in a few pins. You can also use uh, the clips like this if it's easier for you. I don't, I do use clips, but I don't use them for everything. And I don't always, uh, I think it's just how I learned to sew probably more than anything. Just like I can crochet like Houseifier, but I am a slow knitter. And I think it's because I learned to crochet first. So you've got all of your notches and everything to help you line everything up. I'm going to just surge around this. You can also sew it at the sewing machine. Here is my little sleeve pinned in. You can see the wrong side here. You can see the wrong side here, but where they touch each other, ready to sew it in. Five eighths of an inch. After this is hem and neckline and we're done. Oh, I can't wait to try this on. This is going to be fun to wear. So 
I have a sleeve. I'm just going to pull this out so you can see. Went in beautifully. Now I'm going to sew in the other one. I'm going to be very careful not to stretch or pull this little neckline out of shape until I get the little collar piece on. And honestly, we could have gone ahead and hemmed it um, after step three if you wanted to. There's no reason to save the hem till the end because you already had all of your... Why is this? I have a weird hair somewhere. I can feel it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sew in the other sleeve, and then we will be back to talk neckline. Neckline and hem. One thing I'll say about using clips instead of pins is you never stab yourself with a clip, where I am constantly stabbing myself with pins. Okay, that was step seven. Now, step eight, they have a stay stitch the neckline. This is a, um, that's sort of up to you. I, I never stay stitch the neckline on something like this. Now, I do on other things, but I seldom do on a t-shirt. So that's step eight. Stay stitching is where you set your machine for a long stitch, like a four, and you go around the neckline to make sure you don't stretch it out. You could actually go in and stay stitch each individual piece before you sew anything. And that also helps prevent it. It actually prevents it even better than the final stay stitching because you're moving your pattern pieces the whole time and you're likely to um, pull something apart that you don't mean to. So now we're ready to take our little pattern piece 10, which is our collar or our neckline. Um, it's like a crew neck. Same as what I have on here. And we're going to turn it right sides together and sew this center back seam. You can machine stitch it or you can serge it. All right. Once you've done that, we're going to take this. We're going to fold it back on itself wrong sides together. And then I'm going to look at it and see which side I like better that's the side I'm going to let show. And I can tell already it's this side. So I'm going to line up this seam in the center back garment. I am going to fold this in half. I've got um, the seam will be my center back. I'm going to put a few pins in it to make sure it stays in place. Here's my center front. I made a little notch. So I'm going to put another pin there. It just makes it stay flat. And I'm going to go ahead and pin on my seam to my center back neckline. And I'm, so right sides together, both sides are right sides. So if you have a pattern like I do, choose the one that you like the look of the best. And I'm going to put a pin on my center front. So we're lining everything up. And then we have little notches in the shirt and in our neckline. And we're going to line those up. The neckline should be a tiny bit smaller than the shirt. So you should see a little bit of fullness. So if I hold it like this, can you see there's a tiny bit of fullness right here? Just a wee bit. We're going to stretch it ever so slightly when we go to sew it together. And then we're going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to serge mine on. You can sew it or serge it. If you want to, I did not. But if, you, if it bothers you to have this little bit of raw edge in your um, dart, you could come and serge that little section. Usually when you have a crew neck like this, it's too big. And when you go to sew it on, the crew neck does not pull it in enough. Mine's pulling because I have a mic on it, but the crew neck should tuck up against the neck. And a lot of times it's pa the pattern is almost the same size, the neck piece to the neckline, and it kind of flaps out or it doesn't shape nicely. This one is small. I love it. I mean, you want it to be two or three inches smaller at least, and this one's more than that. So it's going to pull it in real nice. After this, we'll hem, and then I can go eat lunch. This will be a morning project for me. I will be done in the morning. I love that. And if I were not filming this for you, this would probably take me from cut out to finish hour and 10 minutes maybe, most at the most. So we have this dart, and just as general rule, darts and seam lines will press towards the back unless otherwise specified. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press it towards the back. I may have to order this in a smaller size and make it for my mom. All right, we are pinned in. 
I'm going to gently stretch as I sew so that everything fits together nicely. The biggest issue when surging, because you're supposed to be surging off 5 eighths of an inch, is that you have to somehow get over to that 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to, where I start here in the back, I'm actually going to cut down and over, make a little notch so that um, I can start on the 5 eighths inch line. I'm going to first mark it so that I don't have any issues getting off. I want to mark my 5 eighths inch. Get you a ruler that's 5 eighths inch wide. It sure makes life easy. So you have to decide which side you want up. Should have marked on the other side. Let's flip this over. Because I want the neckline, the little collar piece, the neckline on top and the shirt on the bottom. And the feed dogs help ease in the um, excess fabric. So now I'm going to snip down. Now I'm not snipping to the 5 eighths inch line. I'm snipping down about 3 eighths. What the serger would naturally cut off, I'm going to start it manually. Okay, I've snipped in. This is so I can set this right in along the serger. The needles are going to sink right here. And then this will be out of the way of the knife. The knife will start cutting after this and I can get it nice and perfect at the serger. Okay, I know it's going to be hard to see, but here's my little tails that I've pre-cut so that the needles can line up right on the line that I need them to. So now when I'm sewing, get this straightened out. Can you see that um, it's pre-cutting. It's I got a little I got a little head start for it. And now it's happy and stitching like it needs to do. And I can just and I am pulling as I go. You would do the same thing. It's so you don't have to trim away at sewing machine, but you would do the same thing sewing machine as far as pulling. Um, if you need to, normally I have a hand on both sides. Not that I have to pull from behind, but to keep my tension nice and even. And so that's where it started. I'm just going to keep going around. Now we should have a nice, I'm always check my work, make sure I don't end up with a hole or a little fold over or, you know, there's a thousand things that could happen. There's our shirt. Okay. I'm going to surge around this hem. I'm going to press everything and I'm going to press up my hem and I'm just going to top stitch all the way around and that's it. We're done. Okay. We're going to do this little edge stitching here. Make sure you have pressed your seam allowance down. You don't want it up in the neckline, but on the shirt side. And you can see where my needle is. I am stitching right next to my little neckline. So what's going to happen is it's going to hold down the stitching or the seam allowance on the inside to the shirt side. And I love this foot because you can see I can actually line up this seam with the inside of that foot. I can actually even move it over closer if I want a really close stitch. Look at that. So I get to choose exactly where I want it. I'm going to engage my, um, my even feed foot for this because it makes everything easier. You can see how close I'm stitching and you might have to stretch a little bit, which is understandable because we had to stretch the neckline to get it on and then the stitching is going to look like that look at how close it stitches my neck is stitched I have got clips I have pressed up the hem and clipped it I'm going to show you a little close-up of what the corners look like in the instructions, they show doing a uh, double fold it, where you fold the hem in twice so that you have no raw edge. But since I've surged my edge, I'm not worried about that. I've just folded up my 5 eighths. I've folded in on itself here. And when I come along the stitch, it doesn't line up perfectly. I'm not super worried about it because when I stitch, you won't be able to tell. This one lines up better. So we're just going to stitch around about half an inch. And okay, put my tray table back on. I sink my needle on the corners where I want to turn to get that nice little sharp corner. I sink it and turn, lift the foot and turn, and it just makes for a neater looking hem.
No need to stretch for the hemline. Okay, we have a garment all done. Let's go try it on. Let's go see how it looks on. I did give it a press. I think I'll do one more little press around the hem. Okay, let's go see how it looks. Quick reminder that I did widen this a little bit at the hip. Sleeve length is perfect when it's down. I tend to usually push my my sleeves up. But cute, isn't it? Boy, this was a fast and easy sew. This is marked as easy sew on the pattern. And this was view D. I definitely will make this again in, um, in the shirt tail hem with a shorter sleeve. You can see making this pattern a lot, especially since I enjoy raglan. Here's the neckline. Yeah, very simple and easy, very cute. And I hope I don't regret looking in the camera. This is a lot. I'm gonna look in the mirror real quick. Okay, it's fine in the person. <laughs> it looks in the camera. Um, it's interesting how it shows up, but it looks fine in person. So, I would love to know if you sew this up and uh, how it goes for you. Definitely will be sewing this one again. Okay, it's a no makeup day, but I did get another shirt made and I want to throw it in at the end of the video. So here it is. Sewing up that stash. I'll see you next week for another fun video.